This is Pastor Tony Kemp, and I want to welcome you to Good News Today. I want to tell you that God has some good news for you, and he's revealing this good news through the person of Jesus. You know, when Jesus was on earth, he caused the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk. He brought the dead back to life and he did all kinds of miracles. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He was buried. And three days later, he came back to life and he proved himself alive with many infallible proofs. He appeared to his disciples and then he went into heaven and he told all of his disciples, from that day to this, to share the good news. And so that's why I'm here. Uh, I, I'm here to share with you the love of God, the kindness and the grace of God as it's revealed through the person of Jesus. And so let me share with you some words of personal testimony. In the Bible, in the book of Exodus, chapter 15, in the latter part of verse 26, God speaks and he says, I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord who heals you. Well, several years ago, uh, I had an injury. And as a result of that injury, uh, I injured my back and I was in tremendous, tremendous pain. In fact, um, I thought my life was over as I knew it. Uh, I could not put on my socks. I could not put on my shoes. I could barely move. And uh, I had a, a personal assistant who helped me. And I thought, well, you know, I need to go to the doctor. And so my personal assistant drove me there. And just to show you what kind of pain I was in, um, every bump that he hit, I felt. I was in pain lying down, I was in pain sitting down, I was in pain walking, I had to take very, very small steps. I had to move very, very slowly. Actually, to be honest with you, I thought, well, maybe my life as I've known it and my ministry is over. Uh, that's how um, severe I thought that the injury was. And so I thought, I better go to the doctor and I better find out what the injury is. And so I did go to uh, the doctor, he told me uh, about the injury and so then I had my assistant take me home and I began to talk to the Lord God Almighty. And I said, what do I do? Now, you know, in the Bible, it talks about a man by the name of David. And David was both a prophet and a king. And one of the things that David did in the Bible is he would ask the Lord questions. And uh, it was called it to inquire of the Lord. And so I began to talk to God and I began to ask him, okay, what do I do? Because, um, you know, and, and this is clearly, clearly in the Bible, because uh, one day there was a man who was uh, persecuting the church of Jesus. His name was Saul, uh, which, by the way, is translated one who tears down. Or, uh, um, and so uh, he's persecuting the church of Jesus. And as he's on his way into a city called Damascus, obviously in Syria, uh, he, uh, Jesus appears to him in a bright shining light and knocks him to the ground and he says, I am Jesus, because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Jesus died for your sins, he was buried, he came back to life. And he is the way into heaven, because if you turn from your sins and against your sins and believe in Jesus, uh, the, the, uh, the apostle John said in John 3:16, God so loved you that he gave his son Jesus for you that if you would commit your life to Christ, to commit your life to Jesus, uh, your sins will be forgiven, your sins will be washed away, you'll become a child of God and you'll have eternal life. As soon as you die, the angel of the Lord will come and get you and take you into heaven to be with Jesus and God Almighty forever. And so um, when, when, when Jesus introduced himself to Saul, he said, I'm Jesus. And uh, because, you know, Saul's first question was, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus. And then uh, Saul's next question was, um, well, what shall I do? Well, that Saul became the great apostle Paul, which means one who builds up. And so it's, it's appropriate in, according to the scriptures, according to the Holy Bible, to ask God questions. And so I said, Lord, what do I need to do? 
And at that point, the Lord spoke to me and he told me to go to the book of Proverbs. And he told me what chapter. And so I just very simply want to turn there to the book of Proverbs. To chapter four, he told me to turn to it. And he gave me this scripture because the Holy Spirit, uh, he will give you scriptures from the Bible. And whatever the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of the Creator, God the Father, he always speaks in line with the Holy Bible and the Holy Scriptures right here. And so he gave me chapter 4, verse 20, and this is what it says. It says, My son, attend to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. That means obey my sayings. Give full, your full undivided attention to the Word of God. Obey my sayings. Incline your ear means to bow down, which means to humble yourself, and obeying the sayings of God Almighty. Do not let my words depart from your eyes. In other words, give your full undivided attention to my holy word, the Bible, the revelation of Jesus. Okay? Humble yourself and obey the teachings of Jesus, the teachings of the Bible, the word of God. And then once you put your eyes on Jesus and put your eyes on the, the Bible, the written word of God, do not take your eyes off the word of God. And then it says, keep my words in the midst of your heart. In your heart, keep my words. For my words are life to those that find them and healing or medicine to all their flesh. And so this is one of the things I discovered. And this is one of the things I teach. Whenever God Almighty wants to do a miracle, he gives you instructions to follow. And this is a major key to the miraculous because Jesus is a healer and Jesus is a miracle worker. And so if you need a healing, a spiritual healing, a mental healing, an emotional healing, a physical healing, or after you've given your life to Jesus and you're born again by the word of God, your human spirit can be born again by the word of God because you have a spirit, you have a soul, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And so when you uh, confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, because the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, that if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that Christ died on the cross for your sins, that he was buried and he came back to life, that God raised him from the dead, and you say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins, forgive me. Come into my life, Jesus. Jesus becomes your Lord and Savior. You're saved, all your sins are forgiven. Everything you thought, everything you said, everything you did that was sinful in the eyes of God is totally forgiven. Your human spirit is not, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of the Creator God Almighty comes into your human spirit and you receive the life of God because the Bible says in the, in, the, in, in the book of Romans that the Apostle Paul wrote that Jesus appeared to, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so Jesus said, he who believes on me has eternal life. And in the original language, it means you believe into Jesus. In other words, you believe out of sin living into right living. You believe uh, uh, out of uh, darkness into God's light. You believe out of sinful, uh, out, out of uh, uh, spiritual death. So you won't go to hell, the lake of fire, and you believe into eternal life where you go to be in heaven, where the saints are, where the apostles and prophets are, where Jesus is and where God the Father is. And so the, the apostle Peter said, your human spirit can be born again by this very word of God that I'm sharing with you. It's good news. Amen. Your human spirit can be born again by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. And, and uh, James, one of the apostles says, your human spirit was born again by the word of truth. And so this Bible that I'm sharing with you, it is the word of truth. It is the word that Jesus taught. And, and Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to God the Father except through me. And so it's good news. And so uh, what I want to share with you is Jesus said in the book of John, one of his apostles, You're, you, you must be born of the Holy Spirit. And all you have to do is just yield to Jesus, surrender to Jesus, give your heart to Jesus. Okay, so Jesus can forgive your sins. He can become your Lord and Savior, but he can also become your healer. And so what I did then was I began to give attention to God's word. I began to humble myself and I began to read the word of God where Jesus is a healer and where the word of God says, if you keep your eyes on my word, if my words get in your heart, my words will be a supernatural life. 
It'll be supernatural life because God by definition is a supernatural being. And when you receive his holy word, when you receive the word of God, you're receiving the life of God himself in the name and in the person of Jesus. And so I began to get into the word of God literally all day. I was still in pain. I could barely, barely move, but I still received the word of God. Scriptures on healing. Scriptures like uh, Exodus uh, 23 verse 25 where it says, you will serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread. He'll bless your water and the Lord will take your sickness away. I, I, I began to, to read scriptures like, uh, let, me, let me give you this one. Um, in, the book of, uh, in the book of Isaiah uh, chapter 53, where it talks about, uh, where it talks about Jesus. And because uh, Isaiah was one of the great prophets. And, and uh, maybe you've heard these scriptures. Maybe you have not heard these scriptures, but I'm giving you a roadmap to healing if you need healing or if you're already a believer in Jesus and uh, you want to minister healing. But it says here in uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, that Jesus was wounded for your transgressions. That means your sins, your rebellion against God. And Jesus was bruised for your iniquities. This word here means that you have a bend toward doing the wrong thing instead of the right thing. And that the chastisement of your peace was placed upon him. In other words, Jesus went to a whipping post and received 39 lashes to purchase your physical healing. He died on the cross so that your sins could be forgiven by God Almighty. This is good news. Uh, but uh, he went to the whipping post and received 39 lashes so that he could purchase your healing for you. Uh, when he died on the cross, he purchased your salvation, but when he went to the whipping post, he purchased your physical healing. And the scripture says, with his sufferings at the whipping post, we are healed. And so then in the uh, book of the apostle Peter, uh, chapter 2, verse 24, it says, by the sufferings of Jesus, you were healed. So Jesus has already purchased your salvation, your forgiveness, so you can become a child of God. Jesus becomes your Lord and Savior. God Almighty becomes your heavenly Father. And also, Jesus becomes your healer and your miracle worker, if you can believe what I'm sharing with you. And trust me, it's good news. So I just began reading the Word of God, reading the Word of God, reading the Word of God, all day. And all day I still stayed in pain. But I would not let the Word of God depart from before my eyes. I let the Word of God stay in my heart. I paid attention to God's Word. I humbled myself. I was doing what God's Word says. And God's word was working, even though I, it didn't feel like it, even though it didn't seem like it, his word was miracle life. It was like medicine. It was like healing. And so remember now, when you go to a physician, because when in the scripture says in Exodus 15, 26, I'm the Lord your healer, it means I'm the Lord your physician. So when you go to a physician, what does he do? He diagnoses your case, okay? He tells you the cause and then he gives you the cure, but in between the cause and the cure, he gives you a prescription. He gives you instructions to follow. And so when you follow those instructions, then you get better and better till you're completely well. And so I just got in the word of God all day, all day. I was in pain when I went to bed. But here's the thing that's miraculous. When I woke up in the morning, all of my pain was gone. All of my pain was gone because the scripture says and I'll read this to you in the book of Matthew, which was one of the apostles of Jesus. And I know for some of you, uh, this is very simple, and maybe you already know this, but um, it's, it's very, very important that you, uh, for those of you who already know Jesus and follow Jesus, that you learn from my example, because I'm sharing with you the word of God that healed me, that healed me, and that can heal you or that you can share with others, because this is good news, that will bring healing to others, because I'm sharing with you the goodness of God. So in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16, it says, When evening was come, they brought to Jesus many that were possessed with demons, and he cast out the evil spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick, verse 17, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, that Jesus took upon himself our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. In other words, 
You have a sickness and a disease. If you give that sickness and disease to Jesus, Jesus takes that sickness, Jesus takes that disease, and in place of that sickness and disease, he puts healing and health in your body. Jesus did this for you. It is written that Jesus did this for you, and when you believe it, uh, you see the manifestation of the reality of the scriptures in your life. So here's what happened. Uh, uh, on, on a Thursday, I went to the doctor. Friday, uh, I was pain-free. Saturday, I was moving around. This is the thing that's amazing. Sunday, I preached. The doctor was actually in the congregation of the church where I was preaching. When I went back to the doctor, even he himself said it was a miracle. Why? Because Jesus is a miracle worker. And uh, Jesus, what he did for me, the Bible says God is no respecter of persons, and that what he has done for me, he will do for you. Now, let me share with you some other scriptures. And again, here's what I want to say to you if you are a believer in Jesus already. As you're listening to me, what you're receiving is you're receiving the anointing that will bring healing to you, or you're receiving the anointing, especially if you've already given your life to Jesus and you've already been filled with the Holy Spirit. What you're receiving right now is you're receiving the anointing to, uh, 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 to be healed, but also you're receiving an impartation, an anointing to bring healing to others. And this too uh, is good news. And so uh, here's what I want to say to you. Uh, and I think I'll just, um, when, before Jesus died, he had this last supper with his disciples. And I want to read this to you. And this is from uh, the book of John the Apostle, chapter 14. And uh, Jesus is getting ready to announce um, that, that he's going to go away. They did not know that he was going to be crucified. They did not know that he was going to be buried and then resurrected and that he would be alive forever. They didn't know that. And so, um, and so in chapter 14, verse 1, this is what Jesus says. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So perhaps you're watching this and you believe in God, but you're also to believe in Jesus. And to believe means to submit yourself to Jesus, um, uh, surrender yourself to Jesus, yield to Jesus. And when, when I say the word yield, uh, you know, if you were driving, when you yield, you let the other person go before you. You're second, the other person is first. It means to surrender to Jesus. It means to say yes to Jesus. You do not turn your head to the left or the right. The Bible says do not turn your head to the left or right. Go straight. In other words, you don't tell Jesus no. Whatever Jesus says, you say amen, so be it. Okay? And Jesus said in my Father's house, he means heaven, there are many mansions, places for you. If it were not so, I would not have told you. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. The good news I have for you is this. If you surrender your life to Jesus, if you give your life to Jesus, God the Father writes your name in a book of eternal life. You become a child of God and a follower of Jesus Christ. And God has a place for you in heaven. And uh, Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place for you, Jesus said, I will come again and receive you to myself. In other words, after Jesus went to heaven, he went and sat down at the right hand of God the Father, and Jesus promises, I'm coming back for you. That's good news. And he said that where I am, you may be also. Now listen, I've had the privilege of seeing heaven. And let me tell you this, it is beyond peace. It is, it, it is, you experience the love of God. Uh, the love of the Father, the love of Jesus. You experience joy indescribable and full of glory. Here on the earth, everything is decaying. It's passing away, it's dying. But in heaven, everything is alive. Uh, the colors are vibrant. There is music in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the peace of God, the, the joy of the Lord, the glory of God. It, it, it is life, okay, and there's peace. And there's no, there's no sin there. There's no sickness there. There's no disease there. There's no worry. There's no stress. There's no pressure. You're f totally free. It's like living in the most blessed possible dream. And that's the place that Jesus has prepared for you. And that's the place that Jesus is going to take you to. Jesus said to his disciples, 
Where I go, you know, and the way, you know. And one of his disciples by the name of Thomas said, now, Lord, we don't know the way. How, you know, we don't know where you're going. We, how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. See, Jesus uh, was perfect. He never sinned in anything he thought, said, and did. He was perfect. He was absolutely clean, absolutely righteous, absolutely holy. You, since the day you were born, you were a sinner by nature and a sinner by choice. You can never be good enough to get into heaven. Jesus knew that. So when he died on the cross, he took your sins and put it on himself. And he was pure, righteous, and holy. And in exchange, he gave you his purity, his righteousness, and his holiness. In other words, Jesus shed his blood for you. So that when God the Father, who is righteous and holy, looks at you, he doesn't see your sin. He sees the perfection of Jesus. He sees the obedience of Jesus. He sees the holiness of Jesus. He sees the righteousness of Jesus. He sees the blood that Jesus shed for you, and you're covered by the blood of Jesus, and all of your sins are forgiven and washed away and taken away, and you're accepted by God the Father because you receive Jesus, you serve Jesus, you follow Jesus, you love and obey Jesus. Okay, this is called justification. Uh, the book of Romans chapter 5 said, said, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So when you're justified by faith, you stand before God as if you had never sinned. And so now the Father hears your prayers when you pray in the name of Jesus. Okay? So the goal of life is to get to God the Father because he's wonderful. He's glorious. Uh, he, is, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the creator of the universe. And when you receive Jesus, he becomes your daddy. So Jesus says to Thomas, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and you have seen him. And Philip says, Lord, show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been so long time with you, and you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. In other words, when you see Jesus, and so here's what I want to encourage you to do. Read the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because you see the personality of Jesus. You see what Jesus likes and what he doesn't like, what Jesus loves and what Jesus hates. Jesus loves everybody. He may hate the sin, but he loves everybody. That's why the Bible called Jesus a friend of sinners. So he would disagree with what a sinner was saying and doing, but he would love the sinner himself. And Jesus came to where the sinner was to bring the sinner out of sin into right living, to have this fellowship with with the sinner so that the sinner would turn from sin and against sin and have fellowship with Jesus and have fellowship with the Father. And so the personality of Jesus is kindness. The personality of Jesus is love and mercy. The personality of Jesus is the goodness of God. And so uh, I, I just wanna share this with you because it's like so, so, so important because a lot of people think, well, well, God's mad at me. God's upset with me. God doesn't like me. And they blame every bad thing that happens. Uh, God's against me. But that's not true because God is for you. Okay. When Jesus was on earth, he showed people what God was like. And Jesus never did anybody any, any harm. He only did people good. In fact, in the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it said that God the Father anointed his son Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power, and Jesus went about doing good. Remember, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. So the key to knowing the Father is to know Jesus, and the Father is good, and Jesus is good. Now, let me tell you about a heavenly encounter that I had. And I was face to face with Jesus, literally just like this. And Jesus said, tell the people how good I am. Tell the people about the goodness of, of my God and your God. Tell the people about the goodness of my father and your father. Tell the people how good I am. That's what Jesus said to me, standing uh, face to face. And so I've come to tell you about the goodness of God. Uh, that's my God. It's the God of Jesus. I've come to tell you about the goodness 
of Jesus, heavenly father. That's not my heavenly father because I believe in Jesus. God is a good God and he loves you. He cares about you. He's going to intervene in your behalf. He's going to help you. He's going to assist you. And so here's what I want to say to you, regardless of what you're going through, God is going to turn what's bad into something good. He's going to provide for you. He's going to see you through this uh, situation successfully, and you're going to come out of it just because God's going to help you. And it's not because you're good or because uh, you're wonderful uh, in terms of your behavior, but you're wonderful because his heart loves you. He's going to do it because of his kindness. He's going to do it because of his goodness. And, and, and uh, Jesus said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. And, 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 and he says, uh, how do you say then, show us the Father? Then Jesus said this to Thomas. He said, do you not believe that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? The words I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father dwells, dwells in me. He lives in me and he does the works. When you say, Jesus, come into my life, Jesus is living in your heart, Jesus is living in your mind. Jesus is living in your body. And now you're in Jesus. Okay. And the scripture says this in second Corinthians chapter five, verse 13, verse 17. If any person is in Christ, he becomes something he never was before. He becomes a new creation. Old things passed away and are dead. And all things become new. Just like Jesus is in the father and the father's in Jesus. Now you're in Jesus and Jesus is in you. And because of that, your life can change. But you've got to get your, in the written word of God, reading from Matthew to Revelation, reading about Jesus and the instruction of Jesus that the apostles give you. If you do that, if you do that, your mind will be changed. Because in the book of Romans chapter 12, it says, give your body to God as a living sacrifice and be transformed by the renewing of your mind and let your mind be renewed by the word of God that you may prove the good, acceptable and perfect will of God that you may live a holy life. And you live a holy life by loving Jesus and by obeying Jesus. And for those of you who are listening to me and you're, you have not given your heart to Jesus, let me lead you in a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, say it after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. You died on the cross for my sins and you came back to life. I'm a sinner, but I repent. Forgive me. Come into my life, Jesus. I'll serve you forever. And if you've said that prayer, God has forgiven you. And now you know Jesus.